I'm so happy to be here, and I, there's so many good things to share. And first thing I will talk about is how good God's love and His law are. Now, people hear me talk about the love of God, but let me tell you, I also love His holiness very much. I love everything about God. When I think about God, I really like Him, I really love Him. And His presence is very real, that we can bless people. And you too can have the strong presence of God to bless people. And it's very important that we have a very, very positive view of God. That we know who He is, that He is so loving, so kind, so good, and at the same time so holy. Now first, first talk about His love. Now let me, I want to share this, I think you all agree with me. Many people live under some kind of pressure. Many people have some kind of unhappiness in their life. Tension from people, hurts from people, and unhandled, unhandled hurt feelings and, and negative feelings. And all this, you know, many people live like that. And when we grow up, many of us have been blamed by people and hurt by people. And so we don't have much confidence sometimes of ourselves. We say, people don't like me. Um, uh, what I do for people you know, is not appreciated. Uh, and my life cannot do much. You know, all of these, I want to say, is because of the negative effect from people. It's the negative effect from people that make us feel the lack of confidence. Actually, we are really loved by God. God loves us so much, we'll all read about that in the Bible. But very often we don't apply it. We know, we know God loves. But how many of us really say, Oh, God loves me, so I don't have to worry about anything. He takes care of everything, so I don't have to worry about anything. And I know He wants to bless me, He cares about me, and He wants to use me greatly. Now, if you really believe in the love of God, then you will say, Yes, I can live in a very relaxed way. Now I know we are all sometimes affected by people when we grow up. What do we grow up with? Do we grow up with grace or the law? You know, even the parents, the parents are the people who love us most in the world. It's true. And we appreciate our parents. The parents are the greatest gift from God on earth. But the problem is even our parents also live under the law. What I mean is, they always think of what I have to do, what I cannot do, what, how I fail. And so when, you know, parents do love the, the children, when, especially when they are babies. Because when babies, they don't disobey that much. And so the, the, the parents really love the babies. But when they grow up, generally, there's a lot of law. You have to do this, do that. If not, I won't love you. You have to obey, your, you don't obey, you're not a good boy, you're not, not a good girl. So that kind of concept has gone into the heart of people. We basically grow up in the law. Now even in a church, we're supposed to live under the grace, right? But even in church, a lot of people say, Oh, I, I did not love God enough, I did, I did not pray enough, I haven't handled my sins problem. I, I'm not faithful in many things. So many times we think of the failure. Now, let me tell you, I agree those are failures. The point is how to overcome that. But sometimes people use the law to overcome this problem. And then they will say, for instance, you hear people talk to people. You have to pray more. You read the Bible. You obey God. If not, you know, there will be problems. Now, it's okay to, to say that. But what I want to say is, it's better to say to motivate with the grace of God, the love of God. Because the Bible does use the grace of God, the love of God to motivate us. Now to motivate us with the uh, grace of God would be like this. You know, God is very happy with us. He loves us. He wants to bless us. He has all kinds of blessings for you. And before you pray, He knows your needs. So when you pray, He's very happy. He rejoices over us with singing, and He's very happy, and He will bless you. So there are all reasons to pray. Now, is this very different from, you have to spend so much time praying every day? Have you prayed? Have you prayed this morning? Have you prayed last week? That is motivation by the law. Have you noticed the difference? If we say, God always hears my prayer. Now, I've seen many people, they pray like this. 
Oh God, where are you? I'm in trouble. Please come to help me. Don't forget me. Oh, I need you. I want to say this kind of prayer is a prayer of lack of faith. It's saying, God is not helping me. I'm in trouble. And you forgot about me. And that way, people live under pressure. But the fact is, the Bible tells us that before we pray, He already knows our needs. And when we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. And far as the heaven is above the earth, so great it is love to those who fear Him. So His love is, you know, is planned for us. His nature is His nature. God's nature is to love and bless. Of course, when people don't follow God, you know, sometimes people go to church and then they fight at home and they yell at home, or they fight in the church. They don't get the blessings, not because God doesn't love them. It's because of the rejection, if not because of the sin, they don't receive the blessings of God. So we can all pray like this. Can you follow me to declare the grace of God? Dear Lord Jesus, you can close your eyes. You love us so much. You have so many blessings planned for us. You have a wonderful plan for our life. We can trust in you. We can relax in you. When we have a close relationship with you and obey you, all these good things will be given to us. So we have confidence. In you we have all blessings. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be under pressure. Because you have decided to bless us. So we can relax in our whole lifetime. We can live under grace. We can enjoy your love. We can be motivated by your love. We can live our life in peace and joy. Hallelujah! It's so good to be loved by God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! <laughs> in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is that different? <laughs> to have the grace of God first and to hold on to the promises of God. So very often people read these promises. You know, you have read these promises too. But they just skip it. And then what do they remember? Oh, if you sin, God will not hear your prayer. And God doesn't listen to you. I mean, many people look at those verses. And what I have to do, what I have to do. Now, we, we have to do this too. It, there's a should have a balance of grace and the law. I'm not saying just the grace, just the love of God. It's both. But first, the motivation always comes from grace. Amen. Now sometimes there can be motivation from the law. If people don't obey, then you can tell them, if you sin like this, you can go to hell. I mean, that is motivation from the law. But we don't start with that to every Christian, you know. You pray because if you don't pray, you go to hell. I mean, that's not... You know, if we motivate like this, I have to pray. If not, I can go to hell. You know, that's not the best motivation, right? When you know God is loving us and God is blessing us, the grace of God motivates us. I like to pray. I enjoy praying. And I know God blesses me. Isn't that the biblical motivation? That Paul did not say, I pray because I, I, I'm afraid I can lose salvation. He did not say that. So, the motivation from grace is very important. And then the law tells us what to do. The law tells us what to do. The Lord actually doesn't give us the strength. The strength comes from the grace of God. Now, the law has strength only when people disobey. If you continue to sin, there will be consequence. God can punish you and you can lose salvation. You know, that is like the last resort when people don't obey. And But we, as Christians who love God, we should be motivated by the love of God and then you live a very peaceful life and relaxed life. Do you want to live like this? Oh, God, I have to obey you. If not, I'll be punished. Oh, I have to obey you. Do you want to live like this? Or do you want to say, God loves me, so I love to obey Him. God loves me so much and I'm happy to pray. I'm happy to obey Him and spread the gospel, right? So the motivation from God is very important. At the same time, I like the law of God, the holiness of God very much. Now, what is, you know, God is so beautiful, everything about Him is beautiful. When one day you go to heaven, now I'm sure that we all have some Christian 
sometimes they mistreat us, right? You might know some Christians who don't like you very much. And, but when you go to heaven, and when they go to heaven, they will say, Wow, so happy to see you. They will say, when they go to heaven, they will not say, I'm going to avoid you. I don't want to see you. I don't, I don't like you on earth, and I don't like you in heaven. Let me ask you, in heaven, how will it be? Will these people avoid you? No. They like you very much and they say, I'm so happy you're in heaven. On earth, they have the sins to block them. But in heaven, they'll be so nice, so good. You say, wow, you're so beautiful now, so wonderful now. That is the good things about God's law and His holiness. Isn't God's holiness beautiful? In heaven, there is no more sin. It's very beautiful. But let me ask you, how are your families? Are your family likes heaven? Are your families full of love and grace and peace and, and really blessing each other? Is your church totally, you know, full of grace of God and love of God and obedience? I have to say very often, Christians, family, and the church sometimes, and the place of work a lot of times is full of negative feelings. <coughs> Negative action, negative words. Isn't that true? It's true. So when people don't live in holiness, actually it's terrible. Is it terrible? It is terrible. So we want to repent of all sins. And we want to, you know, really not to follow sin. And we see God's holiness. You know, when I have the love of God, I'm really motivated to obey God in every way. Because I don't want to give Satan a foothold. If I give Satan a foothold, he can steal from me. He'll take away the blessings of God. If you hear one thing, Pastor Yip has committed some serious sin and he cannot serve anymore, will you feel sorry? You'll feel very sorry. Now if that happens to you, will you feel sorry? You will feel sorry. So we want to keep our life holy. But first, live in the love of God. Motivated by the love of God. And then we have the motivation to obey God. Now, I, here I want to briefly talk about how we can overcome sins, you know, even though, you know, I have so many things. First, I want to talk about the love of God. I will still talk a little bit more later. But I want to talk about how to handle sin because people say, okay, it's good to have the holiness of God, but we cannot live in holiness. It's so hard to have all positive thinking, all positive words, always blessing people is so hard. Let me tell you, the motivation to live in holiness and the love of God. The motivations are, first, God loves us so much. God has a wonderful plan in our life. And our life are precious. Is your life precious? Can you tell the person next to you? Your life is precious. Your life is special. No one can replace your life. And you can bless many people. So our life is special. If your life is special, do you want to dump it in a garbage can? We don't want to. Our life is the best we can have. You know, of course we have God. But when God has given us, the most important thing we have is our life, right? When you leave this world, do you hold on to your money? Can you hold on to your money and your talents? Do you still have your talents and money? Nothing will stay with us. But his, you know, our life and what we have done for Jesus will stay with us. Therefore, we treasure our life and we treasure our life and we believe that sins are destructive. Jesus said to the man who was sick for 38 years, he said, sin no more, lest the worst thing will happen to you. Do you want worst thing happen to you? No, we don't want that. We want good things from God happen to us. So the first thing is, realize that sins are destructive. Say it with me. Sins are destructive. Satan will use sin to attack us and to steal from us. Do you want Satan to steal from you? If you don't want it, then you realize sins are destructive and any negative thinking are destructive. Now many people think, I don't steal, I don't hit people, I don't, you know, I don't uh, uh, do things, you know, that I know I don't, uh, do things that are really bad. I don't commit adultery. But many people get worried. 
His worry is sin. Yes. The moment we don't conform to the law of God, we live out, we don't live out the glory of God. We don't glorify God. That is sin. When we don't live like the Christians in heaven, then we are sin. So we say, yes, Lord, I don't want to sin. Worry, negative thinking, negative words. Now this, many people have negative words all the time. They will talk to the children, you're no good, you don't do anything good, you have no hope, no future. People didn't realize this destructiveness of this words. We should tell the children, you are very special, you are very, you know, God is a wonderful man. Do you want to live out the full plan of God? Do you want to become a great person? That is positive thinking with the Word of God, not just not positive thinking of the world. It's positive thinking from the Word of God. Your life is special and you can live to be a great person. Do you want to be a great person? You know, you can bless many people. From childhood, if we tell children that, they will say, yes, my life is very special. So if our life is very special, we don't want any sin to destroy our life. The key is how to overcome sin. Very simple. As soon as you have a simple thought, you don't like someone, immediately you say, that is bad. It's destructive. And I don't want to think negatively, even if that person has done something wrong. Now very often, someone yells at us, and then we say, he yells at us, therefore it's right for me to be angry. Let me ask you, is it right for us to be angry? No. Right, if he sins, does it mean I also should sin and be angry with him? No, he sins, that is his problem. I want to have compassion on the person, I want to love the person and care about the person and forgive him, but I don't want to follow his way of life. When he's angry, I don't have to be angry. So in our heart we say, well, he has said something negative and I discern that. And then I'll say, I choose to obey. And God gives me a five steps to victory that helps us to overcome sins or any negative thinking, negative feelings. Aware. Aware of any sin, any problem. Aware. Second, it's destructive. Destructive. Third, apply biblical principles. What are the biblical principles? To love, to forgive, to bless. Number four, pray. Number five, choose to obey. This is what I do, very simple. This is the Holy Spirit way of working with people. It's very simple. When we realize it's destructive, I don't want to follow it, and then I'll say no to it. Isn't that simple? It's simple, but many Christians just did not apply the teaching of the Bible. And they didn't realize that sins are destructive, even though the Bible is very clear. So when we know my life is precious, God loves me, I want to live on my wonderful life that God has planned for me, and I want to say no to sin. And any moment, I have negative feelings. Let me ask you, at this point, do you have any negative feelings toward your husband, your children, some of your church members? Now they have weaknesses or sins. Should we follow them and be unhappy and be affected by them? Should we be affected by them? No. So we can learn to say, well, if they sin, it is their problem, but I pray for them, but I don't want to be affected by them. You might say it's difficult. Now you can go online and look for Pastor Yim in YouTube. I have a teaching called Joyful Victory. In the past it's called a Sure Victory that you can listen, that I talk about how to handle negative th feelings and thinking and not to be affected by people. Basically, it's what I just told you. I realize it's destructive. My life is precious. I don't want to be destroyed by all this sin and I can choose to obey and bless. But people say, it's unfair. He treats me like that and I, sh and I have, have to be nice to him. Let me tell you. If you are angry with him, it is even more unfair. <laughs> you will suffer more. Do you want to continue to suffer? If you don't, you just choose to obey God and bless God. Isn't the holiness of God wonderful? I love the holiness of God. But I love His love much more. Because the Bible presents us and tells us that the most important nature of God is His love. Now, I'm, I'm not going to... You know, if, if it was a limited time, I just use one verse. Isaiah 49, 
verse 15. Isaiah 49, verse 15. I'm sure you know this verse. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Now, I'm sure there are many mothers here. Have you forgotten your baby somewhere? In a train or in a bus or in a shop? Have you ever forgotten your baby somewhere? Or when you go to church, you just left your baby there and then you have to come back and get your baby? Has it happened to you? None of you, right? Because God has put this nature in you. You won't forget your baby. And even animals. You know, I love to watch National Geographic. And, and then I saw the, even the lioness when the baby is gone. And one time I saw this, you know, I saw two things. One is the baby was gone somewhere. And then she would go for miles. And then she would cry out like this. <sighs> And then, look for the baby. And then, one time, I saw that the baby was killed. And the lioness did this. Oh, it's, it's, her look was, you know, sadness. Ah, like that. And I can see that the lioness had sadness. Now, I like to observe people. I like to observe animals, too. And animals are creation of God. I love to see animals, birds, and you know, I went to your bird sanctuary here yesterday. I love to see the birds. And, and I love to see people. We have the nature of God put into us. That's why you don't forget your babies. And you care about your baby. You want the best to happen, even when your children disobey you. Even the worst scenario, if one day they go to jail, do you still love them? You will still love them and you care about them. Your heart is hurt to the deepest because God has given you that love. Let me tell you, when you understand this love, you understand that God loves you with much greater love, much stronger love and more powerful love and He can help you in everything. So every time when you see your own love and how we can have relationship with people, we have love for people and for even for objects, do you love your home? When you see your home, you feel happy, right? That God has put us, give us this nature that we can love and have relationship with people. That is a gift of God because God is like that. So anytime you have this love, you realize God is also loving you. God is loving you with deeper love. So every time when you pray or when you walk anywhere, you go anywhere, when you're cooking, you say, the Lord is loving me. The Lord is blessing me. The Lord is with me. Oh,
motivation of God and full of the anointing of God. It's so wonderful. Sometimes I pray for people. I just, I don't have to say much. I just think about the love of God. And the love of God can touch people. And I'm very happy to pray for you after the meeting. That, and you learn this. I hope you learn this. The key to have strong anointing, the motivation from God, is not just by a lot of work. Oh, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. Is to have faith. Believe that our God is a loving God. Lord Jesus, you're loving me. You are blessing me. You are helping me. I have nothing to worry about. I have nothing to worry about. I don't have to be bothered by people. Isn't that wonderful? Now many people may say, how can I see God's love? In my life, a lot of trouble, I don't see God's love. I'll tell you five areas. You can write this down too. One, from nature, you can see God's love. Nature. Second, from the Bible. The Bible tells us, Tell us a lot about His love. Number three, from Jesus' redemption. The Son of God came to the world to die for us. Isn't that wonderful? He became sin and became cursed for us. He became a curse for us so that we can be set free from the curse. So that's wonderful. And number four, when you pray to God and worship God, you can experience His peace and help and joy and love. This is also the expression of His love. So every time you love God and you experience His peace and you say, God is loving me. God is blessing me. And then number five, from help in daily life. When you've been helped, you pray for help from God and God helps you. And then you say, God, you are loving me. So hope these five areas. Can you say with me? Nature. Nature. The Bible. Bible. Jesus' redemption. When we come, uh, when we uh, pray or come close to God, when we pray or pray. come close to God, and then number five, they need daily help from God. So if you look at these areas, you can see God's love. And then the different levels we can enter God's love. First, knowing God's love. Many Christians know God's love. Second, believe in God's love. And number three, Believing in God's love even in difficulties. Now, this is one many Christians have problem. When someone hurt them, they say, God doesn't love me. When they lose a child, they say, God doesn't help me. But believe that difficulties came from the world. Difficulties came from sin. Did not came from God. So when you have difficulties, don't blame God. When you have difficulties, hold on to God, and then you can see the blessings of God. So believe in God even in difficulties. And then, fourth, experience His love. The more you trust in His love, the more you pray to Him. When you realize God loves you, and then God will bless you more when you come close to Him. You have more motivation to, to live in His love. And then you can experience His love more when you come close to Him. And then number five, enjoy His love. Do you enjoy your food? Yes. Yes. Do you enjoy sleeping? All these are gifts from God. Just as when you are about to go to sleep, you say, it's so wonderful. And it, you know, some people, they can fall asleep, you know, like for myself, I can fall asleep in one minute or five minutes or 10 minutes, very quickly. <laughs> when your heart is relaxed, it's very, you can go to sleep quickly. And you say, wonderful, God, you are so wonderful. So whenever we experience anything from God, we enjoy God. When you pray your peace, you say, Oh, I enjoy the peace. I enjoy the love. I enjoy God's presence. When you enjoy something, you will be motivated by it. And you will find life more enjoyable. Because many of us suffer. I know that. Many of us do suffer in suffering. But when you enjoy God, your suffering will become lighter. You have strength to overcome. And then the next is to be motivated by God's love to, to love people, to care about people, to give your life to Jesus. Okay? Now I will still go to another topic. So here, briefly I talk about how good God's love is. I don't have time to go into more detail. You can get online and listen to my message about God's love, and then you can, you know, you can live in the love of God. So every day from now you can say, God loves me, God protects me. 
God is my shepherd, I don't have to be afraid. And, and God gives me this prayer of grace. And then a prayer of response to God. Prayer of grace will be like this. Declaring the grace of God. God is loving me. Can you say it with me? God is loving me. God is in front of me and behind me. God is laying a hand upon me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. So this is declare the grace of God. Now this is very important, especially when you are down. Sometimes you say, oh, people don't treat me well. And then you say, God loves me even when people don't treat me well. God has a wonderful plan in my life so I can be happy and joyful. So that's very helpful. Actually for me, every day I declare that many times. God is loving me. God will use me. So I have more faith in God. Faith, for many people, they think faith is, oh, I really believe, I really believe. Let me tell you, I give you a simple definition of faith. When God works, I relax. That is faith. <laughs> Let's say it. When God works, I relax. When God works, I trust in Him. God works, I trust in Him. That is faith. Because God is almighty. It's not the strength of my faith. It's just relaxing in Him. I know He works. I know He cares about me. That is faith. So when you have this faith, then you'll be very relaxed and all day long, and then you can have the joy of the Lord. Okay, so I hope you live in the grace of God. Now, I'm going to talk about the operation of the Holy Spirit in the last five minutes. How you can bless many people. Because I'm sure you come across people who are suffering, right? You know many people who are suffering. How can we help them? First, you can build up the anointing of God. How? Now many people think to build an anointing, they will shout. It's okay to shout. It's okay. If that's your habit, it's fine. I'm telling you, God has moved me in a way to have faith. He really wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. You think of Jesus, Jesus blessing me. And you think of Jesus, His power will come. I'm just letting you see. When some of you worship God and believe God is loving you, you find a power pushing you. Now what is the biblical support for that? That in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17, when John saw the glorified Jesus, he fell down like a dead man. And also when Saul believed in Jesus, he saw Jesus and then he fell down. So in God's presence, we cannot stand. So when you think of Jesus in love, you feel power coming to you. That is His power, His presence. And then, also, you know, so the first thing, you stand in front of a wall a few inches away from it and you think of God's love. Jesus, you love me. You love me. You care about me. And then you, and I love you. And then you can feel the power of God pushing you. And the second, when you open your heart, you might start to feel joy. And there's one way very helpful. You cry out to God from your heart. Ah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Jesus said to worship in spirit and in truth. Your whole spirit. Now worship in the spirit includes the soul. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feeling. Can you say it with me? The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. So your whole mind say God is good. God is the best. First. And then the will. I made up my mind to give my life to Jesus. My life is Jesus. That's the will. And then feelings. Do you have feelings toward your husband and your children? Yes, you do. But do you have strong feelings toward God? Some people do, some people don't. They say, God is so far away. But let me tell you, I have more feelings toward God than toward my wonderful wife. My wife is very nice and we, when we take pictures, our heads always stick together. Because I want to keep my life holy and full of love. And so whenever we take pictures, our heads stick together, always look at each other's eyes. And we always say words of love. And throughout the day, I will communicate with her from time to time that I always want to build up this loving relationship. But let me tell you, I love God much more because God is the most important. And I have stronger feeling toward God that I love Him so much. So I hope you all develop. Whatever you see, you see God's love. The more you think about God's action, Whatever we experience is from God's action. 
from His action of love. And the more you think about His love, the more you'll be touched by the love of God. So, then you have a stronger feeling of love toward God. And then, so there's the mind, the will, and the feeling. And then to worship God in the spirit is Psalm 103, verse 1. All that is in me, praise His holy name. All that is in me. When I praise God, I worship God from all that is in me. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's like my spirit cry to God. Oh, Lord Jesus. So when you cry to God, let your spirit ascend to Him. This is one way to help you. Now for me, I don't need to do that. Because I've done it so many times. In my heart, just think about Jesus. His joy will flow through me. So learn to do that. First time, cry out to God from your spirit. Not just cry out loudly. But, oh Jesus, I love you. I do not love you. I need you. And then, when you pray more, you develop the anointing of God. Anytime you pray, you can feel a power around you. And when I pray for people, I can feel the power of God coming. And then you practice with your Christian friends. Pray for each other, lay hands on each other, and you can feel His presence. And then you, the more you pray, and then you come across someone who is suffering or not suffering, and then you can listen to them and care about them, and respond to them with love. I know you're suffering. I know it's painful for you. I know it's not easy. Speak from your heart. Don't speak teachings. Don't just say, pray and you'll be okay. Trust in Jesus and you'll be okay. Now when you're suffering, when someone says to you, I know you're suffering. I know it's not easy. Do you feel better? Because the person feels your feeling. So you say that to the person and then, and then you can share similar experiences with how you say, I have experienced this too. I have experienced these hurtful feelings too. And I've experienced the healing of the Holy Spirit. And can I pray for you? And then you lay hand on the person. And then you pray. When you pray, don't speak many words. Now people, sometimes they pray, they're very busy. Oh, Jesus bless her. Ah, uh, help her. Uh, take away burdens and all this. A lot of words. But just draw the person's attention to God. God is loving us now. God is blessing us. God wants to help us. God has made up His mind to bless us. And then you just love God, and the person can experience His work more. And then afterwards you ask, after the prayer you say, please keep your eyes closed. Can I ask you, what have you experienced during the prayer? Or what have you felt? Some people don't understand experience. But I first ask experience, because the Bible says, when some people experience the work of God, they turn to Jesus. So if some people say, why do you turn, uh, lead people to Jesus by feelings? So I said, experience. What have you experienced? Or if they don't understand, then I say felt. What have you felt? And then some of them say, I feel peace. And then I said, Jesus said, peace I give to you. Some people feel comforted. And then I said, Isaiah 61 says that, heal the broken heart and comfort all who mourn. When people experience joy, and then I'll say, the oil of gladness in the, instead of mourning. And then people feel comfort. And I'll say Psalm 16, verse 8 and 9, that when, the, when uh, David come close to the Lord, then his heart and his tongue rejoices, and his body rests secure, that the body will feel comfort. Many people will feel comfort. And then we'll say, that's God coming to you to bless you. Do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? And then if he's willing, then you can say, Tell him about Jesus' salvation and ask him whether he wants to follow in the prayer and sincerely confess the sin and trust in Jesus as the Savior. So that's one way I've used. I call experience God evangelism. If you all pray much and then you go out and pray for people, you'll be able to lead many people to Christ. And you can see that in, my, in the internet, YouTube, you look for experience God evangelism. And then you can see that, my explanation of that. So, I'm very happy to be with you, and I'm happy to pray for you after the meeting, and I pray for God's blessings upon you, that you don't just receive blessings. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When you bless more people, your life will be full of blessings, and you'll be living like me. <laughs> you'll be filled with joy every day. You'll feel with confidence and strength every day, and you enjoy life. 
Not, not that I don't like heaven. I like heaven. If Jesus takes me to heaven today, I'm very happy. But I'm happier to stay on this world and bless more people. And that way you'll say, yes, Lord, I want to bless more people. Do you want to bless more people? Your life can make a lot of difference in the world. You can bless many people. When you live in the love of God, you'll be more relaxed and you'll be more motivated and have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You can bless many people. Do you want to live like that? Hallelujah. God bless you all. Let us rise to pray. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so good. You are so good. You are the perfect one. Oh, you love us so much. Without you, we are nothing. But with you, we have everything. Lord Jesus, there are so many people here who might be suffering this morning. Come, Lord Jesus, to assure us that we are loved by you. You care about us. You comfort us. You give us strength. You help us. You want to bless us. You have a wonderful plan in our life so we can start to live in your love. Yeah. Oh.